Welcome to the design of the mobile modular room robot M2R2. In the previous video we have finished with the CAD and the schematics of the robot. You can see this now on the screen. And find all the design parts on my GrabCAD account, link is in the description. In this video I will assemble everything that we have designed so far. I will show you all the additional parts that I have used but won't go into details on how to create the cables. Now this is the last step after which we are finally starting with the programming of the robot. So be ready to start using C++ from the next video. Now let's start. We will start by assembling the motors on the brackets. Here we need 4 stepper motors. Their brackets, 2 middle pieces, M3 bolts and nuts and in some places we can use M3 thread inserts instead of nuts to make the assembly easier. First we check if the motors fit into the brackets. Here you can see that they slide right in without any force. Now to assemble this, first we connect the middle piece with one of the motor brackets. We align them so that the holes, here thread inserts, are pointing upwards. To connect them we use the M3 countersunk bolts, so that we leave enough space for the motors. Next we connect the other motor bracket to the middle piece as well. You can see here the holes pointing upwards on all three brackets. Now we fit the motors in the brackets and connect them with the three M3 bolts each. This is the first part of our robot. The black motor brackets indicate that this is the rear side. Now we need to assemble the front side the same way we did the rear. Now that both sides are finished, we need to connect them together. To connect both of the sides together, we need the main body piece. But first we will place the DC-DC converter and nano on top of it and fit the battery in its place. For this DC I have used M3 studs and M3 bolts and nuts. And for the nano we have two tiny brackets that allow us to reach both pins and the re reset button as well as the micro USB. So this is the main body piece and the battery holder. Here we have the DC-DC that we chose for this robot. We will first place it on the main body piece. I said earlier using the M3 studs on top of the body piece and fixing the studs on the bottom with the nuts. Here you can see the screw terminals where we connect the battery and from where we output 12 volt charge. Now we are going to put the nano on the main piece. This is how it's supposed to look like. The micro USB should point towards the orange motor brackets. To fix the nano on the main piece, first we need to attach the brackets to the nano. These brackets are tiny and have proven to be difficult to assemble. So that's one of the first things that need to be improved for the later build. Now that we have both DC-DC and the Nano on the main piece, we can insert the battery. Here I'm using 5S lithium polymer battery. The connector is a standard XT60 female. To connect this to the screw terminal, we need to make a small cable. This cable will have a male XT60 on the other side and open wires for the screw terminals on the other. You can see the cable here on the screen. Now we are going to screw it inside the terminals. To test the connection, I have just made the terminals connect for a second and you can see the LED on the DC-DC proving that everything is connected properly. Now that we have everything on the main piece, we can connect the front and rear sides together. And that's our main base. Now 
Now we finally see the full shape of the robot coming nicely together. Let's first assemble the front and rear top covers. On the front top cover we have a 4 AAA battery bracket, so let's first put that together. Now we can check if the drivers fit into their small sockets. As you can see here they fit but with a little force on the top. This is okay, because this will keep them secure after the robot starts moving. Now we are going to start putting in the cables. First we connect the cables with the motors and leave them on the middle pieces. Connectors on the cables are 4 pin GST connecting with the motors and 4 pin Dupin connecting with the driver. Here you can see the schematics from the previous video. You can now see why we have left some space between the top and the middle piece. The top will press the wires a little bit but still keep them loose enough so that they don't disconnect by the pulling force. Now the next step is to put the rest of the wires on the robot. I have created everything here from the schematics into one harness. It's a mess to make but the robot will look much neater this way comparing to how it looked like if you connected each wire individually. I will now connect everything according to the schematics, starting with the drivers. First we connect the front left driver, then the front right, now let's put the covers on top of all the wiring, starting with the front one. As you can see here I have fitted the drivers on the top brackets after the wiring. For this I have predicted enough space for the mounting. You can also notice that now the wires are keeping the drivers fixed in the bracket. Now let's quickly finish the second side. This is how it looks like now from close up. Next is to connect the 12V output wires with the screw terminals in the DC-DC. Now we insert the AAA batteries but use only 3 for now. The fourth one we will put in when we need to remote power for the Nano. For now we have no switch so we have to connect the battery instead. So this is the next thing that we need to improve. This is it, now we have assembled the robot base and we can start with the software. We are done with the assembly of the M2R2 base. In the next video we will start to develop the software needed to make the robot work. For now this means moving the robot on the ground. So the first thing for us here will be to test the steppers, in which direction they rotate depending on the input. If you like the video please give it a like and if you would like to see further development of the M2R2 please subscribe. I would like to hear your opinion so please share any comments on the state of the M2R2 so far. I will try to introduce your suggestions in the next build or maybe later in this build. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.